Hello, everyone. My name is Calvin Nullum. I'm here today to present to you a topic that I'm very uh, passionate about. Uh, I came to Detroit to become a teacher because I wanted to provide equity. I wanted to provide a service. I was going to go to uh, engineering school and uh, learn uh, how to, you know, bend uh, technology or learn how to uh, build affordable phones. But my passion was kids. My passion was science. And also I wanted to be impactful. And so this presentation today is to provide hopefully an antidote, a solution to the education system that we do, that we do can all agree on that is in a crisis, right? We have kids that are apathetic. We have uh, very low attendance in a lot of these schools. We have failure rates that are getting higher. Education is becoming less and less a priority. And so in order for us to really, really uh, steer the ship, we have to understand that male educators are needed in the classroom. And so I will start with this quote, my father stumbles, airs the system hands, yet two missteps ch chance my life's demands. And what this quote is about, it's about my brother and essentially how, uh, you know, he was a high school dropout. And I believe he was a high school dropout because of two things. It was because his father was in his life, his male role model. And because I believe the system of mass incarceration during that time that he was living in also failed him. And with that being said, with me, right, uh, also not having my dad in my life, my dad lived right around the corner from me, but I only saw him seven times. My mother ensured that I didn't, unfortunately, have the outcome of my brother. She made sure I had systems in place. She put mentors in front of me. She put male role models in front of me. She had prioritized education as everything. And that is the reason why I'm here today. So let's snap it up for her. <laughs> but here today, I'm here to talk to you about why we're failing boys, because boys are feeling not useful in the world today's society when we talk about economy when we talk about jobs when we talk about money when we talk about being a breadwinners that concept is no longer exists women are the breadwinners in a lot of homes right and what that means is not to say that we shouldn't celebrate the achievements of women and the uh the trials and tribulations that they've been through but we also just have to understand that boys are being left behind and the, the stats just uh, say that. And so suicide rates amongst boys have been increasing uh, from 2022 to 2021. It's three times higher for men than women. Uh, Fiona Chan did a, a study where she recorded the last words of uh, boys and men who attempted to unalive themselves or attempted to commit to unaliving themselves. And the words that they wrote down was feeling unworthy, feeling useless. And if that is how they feel, you know, those results are just very alarming. Males are 9%, or one in 11 chance to go to prison, where females are one in, nine, one in a 91 chance to go to prison. And we know the school to prison pipeline is real, that when one school closes, a prison, you know, opens. When a book closes, a door prison opens. And education is the liberation for a lot of our kids. And it's also, uh, you know, a deterrent. And the, the key point in this is to understand that when these dynamics exist, it creates gender disparities at academic institutions, such as colleges and community colleges, where males may not see themselves represented. And that representation is important because if you don't see yourself, how would you know it would exist? If you don't see a male teacher showing empathy, being empathetic, being a restorative, right, person, how can you model that with fidelity with the student population that we have? And again, it's not to acknowledge that what women have done, right? The tremendous gains they've done, the, you know, just what they've done is, uh, has not been um, awarded, but we have to understand that a big population of our student population are boys, but only 1% of their teachers are uh, male teachers. Here's some data to uh, further uh, pin that point, right? There is a uh, educational uh, gap between um, women and um, both men. Um, and it's in all categories, right? It's, uh, and, and you mainly see these uh, disparities in the lower class, middle class areas, right? Where if you have the money, right, you can get this tutor to help your a boy in, you know, in his math class. Um, I'm actually a product of that. My mother and my cousin, you know, we will always get tutoring because we struggle with math so much because boys, you know, we always need that extra tutoring. But if you don't have the resources to do that, you know, you're not going to get that academic uh, acumen. You're not going to get those study skills and you're going to um, not prioritize education. And we see that men are not as as, you know, excited about education as we want them to be. And that's a problem. 
And boys are struggling, as I continue to say, right? Only 23% of the te teachers are men, right? Um, uh, data from the American Association of College of Teachers uh, say that uh, they're not enrolling to male programs, right? And so if they're not getting the good GPAs, if they're not getting the, uh, you know, the uh, high rates of degrees, and they're not even going to teacher programs, we can make the assumption that uh, teaching will continue to be a, you know, women-dominated sport or uh career which is fine but we have to understand um there's going to be some excuse me we have to understand that uh there's going to be a huge need that needs to be uh, met if there's not uh, a balance between that and this is not just in america it's also in europe uh in the sweden uh educational journey they said that male teachers are still significantly outnumbered by their female counterparts in swedish primary schools right and so again uh, as a whole we have to understand that we if we want to fix society if we want to help society we do have to help the boys out right we have to prioritize them we have to put them in positions where they can be successful on an educational level and not just be what we what they normally are let's let them be intellectual giants and you see the data here uh, is also similar to my school makeup, where it's predominantly black, but it is uh, predominantly also uh, female teachers, right? And when we, and I'm telling you, when we do get a male teacher, it changes, um, and he's effective. It does change the dynamic of our school system. I can think about Mr. Chavis or Mr. Cuffey, right? We are few, but we are very impactful, right? And that is the power of male teachers. And we all share this power. And so why male teachers? Male teachers are culturally competent, just like we all are culturally competent if we care about culture, right? And then when we talk about a brother man and someone who's coming from, uh, you know, growing up in America, a man who, who's who been pushed to work hard, right? Kids love that. Kids love to see that. Sometimes my mere presence is enough, right? But it's not just my mere presence, also my cultural competence. So analysis and educational outcomes suggest that students, when they're taught by culturally competent males, they have higher engagement, right? Because I'm able to code switch, right? I'm able to teach them how the physics connects to what they're doing, right? And also I'm able to be academically excellent and they are able to enjoy my class, right? Uh, they brought in student understanding of different cultures and identities because it brings a different perspective, a different cultural lens that has not been in education uh, enough, right? Even if only 11% of the teacher workforce were male teachers, you will see a huge increase of uh, Black male teachers specifically too. You will see a huge increase in uh, student achievement, but it's only 1%. And so we have to fix this. We know that when a Black student is taught by uh, a Black teacher, um, that 13% of them uh, are likely to role in college when it's two black teachers it goes up by 32 percent and if a local local income black students is 40 percent all right so what is the current state in trying to get male teachers into uh, uh teacher programs get black male teachers into male programs and what the studies are showing that they're actually leaving at a higher rate so something is wrong right and i can tell you what's wrong there's no respect for the profession and there's no power. And also there's no ability to afford the autonomy. So you'll have a lot of uh, black male teachers who are considered the disciplinarian or the silent educator, right? Or the silent disciplinarian. And we are more than that. We're intellectual giants. We want to be the leaders. We want to be, uh, we want to be uh, there to control and uh, be able to uh, help, right? Not in control in a way that's equitable, of course, but also understand that if we don't fix this problem, <laughs> uh, we're not, we're going to have this problem all the way to 2060. And that's what it says if we don't fix this and it's later at one. And it's all about money, power, and respect, right? Um, we surveyed 180 uh, for black male teachers in Detroit and their possible preference in engaging with youth in the community. And the results were that they prefer to be mentors and volunteer, right? So they want to be there, right? They want to be in the school system. So how can we use that interest, right? Hopefully interrogate it and hopefully persuade them to become teachers, right? Because only 4% of the process of attaining teacher certification, but if that was 14% or 24%, Right, we are making tremendous gains because we're getting them the certification programs. We're getting them certified. We're getting them the uh, educational, um, uh, professional development that they may need to maintain the job. Right, um, but also even if they don't want to be educators, we can still have enrichment in a lot of these schools. 
put uh, uh, coaches, put people that uh, teach different other skills that are part of community, that teach different trades that are part of community, and put them in the schools so the kids can see them, so the boys can see them, so they can understand, um, you know, you can be an intellectual giant. And these uh, programs already exist. We have the Michigan uh, Teacher Pipeline Program and the Teacher Detroit uh, Program that's part of Wayne State, which is my alma mater. In Demand and also a B BNWA in the Center for Black Education um, in Philly uh, with uh, Brother El Mecki, uh, Sharif El Mecki, where he is uh, recruiting uh, teachers, okay? And we want to recruit uh, Black male teachers because we want them to get, we want them to heal, right? We want the world to heal. We know that if men heal, the world will heal because the, this world is, you know, being destroyed by men. I say that respectfully, um, but we want them to be in heal jobs. And what a heal job is, the jobs that is the social work, right? It's the teaching jobs, the growing fields of health and education and administration. And they provide, you know, literacy, they provide social emotional work. They're in these positions, right? And we, we know that a lot of boys like to go into STEM jobs, right? And because of uh, civil rights, because of the push for uh, getting more marginalized groups into STEM fields, we've seen a tremendous increase of women get into STEM fields. But the sad part, that hasn't been the opposite for them going into hill fields, which was predominantly uh, occupied by women. We want men to get in these type of fields because we want we want we want the kids to see that that is possible, that you can be a teacher, you can be a, a social worker, and uh, just the data shows that only twenty percent of men are in hill jobs, and that's down from 35 percent in the 1980s okay and so it's just one way and so we want to make sure um that uh there's a balance you have to see it to be it and that means something right and this data also just shows that uh men are not going into care and professions from 1980 to 2010 you see a huge decline in all categories from being a registered nurse elementary middle school teacher psychology and social work so that means that if the if they're not interested and it's predominantly not occupied by demographic that they're in, or excuse me, it's predominantly female, we can say that most of these jobs will be predominantly female if we don't try, if we don't push them in. And not saying that that's a problem, but it can be provide, it can be an inequity for the kids that we're serving specifically our boys. So how do we do this in a way where we are also healing and being restorative? Because you have to understand that one in three of our kids are going to be without a father for several years after a following separation. Four in 10 of the kids are born uh, uh, out of married parents with high rates for amongst a lower level education. And one in four fathers do not live with their children. So how can we imagine fatherhood, challenge traditional notion of the breadwinner, and empower schools to serve as a genuine resource to address the disparity faced by boys who may struggle with feeling inadequate, invisible, and underrepresented? And essentially that is, right? You know, does society have a job for me? Does society value me? Does society see me as a leader? Does society want to push me and put me in these skills, right? Yes, we do. And we want to push that. But it's the traditional norms, it's the stereotypes, it's all those things that we hold on. And also it's us not being progressive enough and understand that nothing's wrong with being a teacher, right? That is just as admirable as being an engineer. And we have to be that, we have to show that, we have to model that, right? And so when we're recruiting these teachers, we're letting you know, like, you're also going to be a father figure to a lot of these kids because that is needed in order to solve the inequity. And we're going to pay you to do it. So lastly, we're going to measure success by establishing metrics and evaluation frameworks to assess the impact of male educators on student outcomes and school culture and teacher retention rates. Use data to track progress and identify areas of improvement and demonstrate the value of recruitment male educators for inclusive teaching practices. And we're going to advocate for policies so we can make sure it exists. Because I remember so many programs, like the SMASH program that I was in, that was uh, very, very, very uh, equity-based, right? It was very, very, very culturally responsive. We had a lot of male teachers to model and be there so the male students can see that excellence is possible. See it to believe it, right? But because the funding ran out, the whole program went away, right? I lost a job. Kids lost a great um uh, amazing summer program, right, in Detroit, and now that need is no longer being met. And that happens when we talk about places where inequity needs to be met. When we leave, right, when we go, when I left my first job uh, as a physics teacher that was certified, they didn't get a physics teacher since. And it's the same thing from other teachers. And so when we talk about solving these inequities, we're really solving real problems, and we're not trying to uh, push one against each other. We're just trying to provide a need for whatever was, we provide resources for whatever the needs are. And so thank you all so much for this presentation. And if there are any questions, oh, if there are any questions, I'll take some. Thank you.